Hello and welcome to another Passive Life video. In this video, we're comparing the solar electric vehicle designs from Aptera, Lightyear and Sono Motors. So before we go any further, I'd just like to mention today's sponsor, Jackery, who've just launched their Solar Generator 2000 Pro. If you're interested in getting your own solar power station, check that out in the link below. So without further ado, let's do a quick overview of the manufacturer's claim data and then get into some deeper discussion. So a quick side note here before we start, all of these three cars are not released yet, and so a lot of this data is theoretical and may change in the future, but this is the intended specifications for each of these vehicles. So let's start with the size. So the Sion is 4.47 meters long, 1.83 meters wide, and 1.66 meters high. The Aptera is 4.36 meters long, 2.23 meters wide, and 1.44 meters high. And the Lightyear is 5.06 meters long, 1.9 meters wide, and 1.43 three meters high. The Aptera is obviously the widest of these three, and that could be an issue for people who live in an area with small parking spaces or tight roads, so do be aware of that. And the Lightyear is obviously relatively long, which is also going to be an issue for some people. Other important data concerning the size here is that both the Sion and the Lightyear are five-seater vehicles, whereas the Aptera is a two-seater vehicle with space in the back. So let's look at some technical specifications. The Sono Sion comes with a 54 kilowatt hour battery, the Lightyear One a 60 kilowatt hour battery, and the Aptera has a choice of 25, 40, 60, and 100 kilowatt hour batteries. All of these may change slightly though, depending on the final specifications. In terms of solar cells, the Sion has 456 half cells. The Lightyear is rumored to have around a thousand mini cells. A slight advantage goes here to Lightyear. The smaller a solar cell is, the more easily you can fit it into a design and maximize out that space. The Aptera currently has 184 full cells. The standard version comes with solar power placed on the roof and the dash. Next up is an option with the roof, the dash, and the hood. A further option would be the solar roof, the dash, and the rear hatch and then there's the full 700 watts with each step costing about $300 more. This gives the Sion a maximum kilowatt peak of about 1.2 kilowatts, the Aptera around 700 watts and the Lightyear One about 1 kilowatt. The claimed daily solar range from the Sion is 16 kilometers average with a maximum of about 35 kilometers. For the Aptera the maximum claimed range is 64 kilometers that's about 40 miles and for the Lightyear about 70 kilometers. In terms of motors the Sono Sion has around 120 kilowatts of power using internal motors. The Aptera has either 100 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts of power spread over internal in-wheel motors depending on your choice and the Lightyear One has 80 kilowatts of total power spread over four in-wheel motors. This gives the Sono Sion an acceleration of around 9 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. The Aptera either 3.5 or 5.5 seconds 0 to 100 kilometers an hour and the Lightyear One around 10 seconds. Now although this isn't slow that is surprising considering this is an electric vehicle as most electric vehicles are a little snappier than that. Especially when you're considering the price tag of the Lightyear One, this could be an issue for some people who are expecting a high performance vehicle when that's a very average acceleration time. In terms of maximum speed, the Sion can reach 140 km an hour, the Aptera is rumored to be limited to 180 km an hour, and the Lightyear One should max out around 150 km an hour. More important however for a solar electric vehicle is the efficiency. The major factors that affect efficiency in these vehicles will be the drag coefficient and the weight. The Aptera has an extremely low drag coefficient of 0.13. The Lightyear has a similarly low 0.2 drag coefficient. The Sion, however, has no official data on the drag coefficient. It's probably somewhere between 0.35 and 0.45 based on similarly shaped vehicles. The weight of the Sion is 1,730 kilograms. The Aptera ranges from an estimated 658 kilos for the 25 kilowatt hour battery to 800 kilos for the 60 and 1,000 kilograms for the 100 kilowatt hour battery. The Lightyear One comes in at around 1,300 kilograms, which, if we compare it to the 800 kilogram 60 kilowatt hour Aptera is considerably heavier, although still lighter than the 54 kilowatt hour Sono Sion. In terms of price, the Sion comes in at 28,500 euros. This car will not be available outside of Europe to start with. The Aptera starts at 25,900 US dollars, and the Line Tier One comes in at 149,000 euros. Now, when we talk about total range from the battery packs, we have to do a little bit of conversion. So I'm going from the EPA range, the Sono Sion, which claims a 305 kilometer maximum range from their 54 kilowatt hour battery is then converted to an estimated EPA range of 
262 kilometers. The Aptera, already using the EPA range estimation, comes in between 250 miles, 400 kilometers for the 25 kilowatt hour battery, up to 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers for the 100 kilowatt hour battery. The Lightyear One has a 725 kilometer estimated range under WLTP or 623 estimated under EPA standard. When compared to the Aptera's 60 kilowatt hour variant, the Aptera is expected to get between 950 and 960 kilometers out of the same size battery. Now it's important to note that all this data comes from separate manufacturers and calculate everything in slightly different ways and so it's not directly comparable. But what we can do is take a little bit of a deeper dive into the design and compare them using our own methodology and see what comes out. I think before we start I have to mention that currently there's no standard definition for what a solar electric vehicle is. Any electric vehicle that has a solar panel stuck on somewhere can currently claim to be a solar electric vehicle. Personally, I have my own definition for what a solar electric vehicle is, which I use as a baseline to compare solar electric vehicles going forward. So in my personal opinion, a solar electric vehicle should be able to generate 7,500 kilometers of range from its own solar panels per year in a region that generates 1,200 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak, which is roughly equivalent to Zone 3 on Aptera's website because the majority of people in the world live in an area that has at least this much solar irradiation and 7,500 kilometers is equivalent to driving 30 kilometers per day for five days over 50 weeks, which should be equivalent to the commuter distance in most countries per year. Now in total people will drive further than this, but I think this should be the minimum requirement that a solar electric vehicle should have in order to say that it is powered mainly by the sun. So let's take a deeper look at the SEV specific designs for these vehicles. So solar electric vehicles, as their name suggests, are designed to be powered mainly by the sun using their integrated solar cells. And because solar cells are very sensitive, exactly how these cells are positioned and distributed becomes an important factor in how efficiently the SEVs can harvest the sun's power. If we take a look at the Aptera, no matter what time of the day or year, almost all of the solar cells will be receiving some direct sunlight, allowing them to work as efficiently as possible. The car was designed around using solar power and consequently the position of the solar cells on the body has been carefully chosen and the same is true for the Lightyear One. They both have very similar approaches to harvesting the sun's power by using a flat plane approach. By pointing the cells towards the sky, they do not have the problem of having to deal with harsh shadows. In contrast, the Sion has taken a different approach. The Sion uses a very standard car body shape, which is not optimal for solar cell performance. In the Sion's case, around one third of the cells will always be in shadow, but the body form does allow for a larger number of cells to help compensate for this inefficiency. So for a better comparison between these vehicles and their solar performance, we need to use some standardized data. In this case, we're using solar data from Munich, because Munich is where Sion have based their data. For the Sion car itself, I've separated out all the individual sides, counted the solar cells, and then and calculated each surface as a separate solar panel using their maximum potential output. All vehicles for these calculations have been turned so that the maximum number of solar panels are facing towards the sun. For the Sion, that means its front is facing the sun. For the Aptera and the Lightyear, their backs are facing the sun. The rear section of the Aptera has an angle of around 15 degrees, and 86% of its solar cells are calculated on this angle. The HUD is angled at 22 degrees facing the other direction, which is the remaining 14% of the solar cells. Now 12% of the solar cells of the Aptera are actually behind glass on the dash of the Aptera and so I've reduced this calculation for these cells individually by 25% to make up for the reflection loss from the windshield. The bulk of Lightyear's panels are calculated at 10 degrees facing the sun and that's about two-thirds of their total cells and the rest are angled at 13 degrees facing away from the sun. Now Munich, according to the Aptera's website, is around zone 2, which is around 1,100 kilowatt hours of energy per kilowatt peak per year. Now for my definition, I'm going to have to adjust that later by around 10% to reach 1,200 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak for a zone 3. So let's take a look at the results. Before we start, I have to say that these are unrealistic results. These are absolute optimum results based on the average solar irradiation for this region, an optimum angle for your vehicle, and basically not moving your vehicle from the parking spot at all. In reality, I think you can expect to take a third off these results in order to get a more realistic number. So the Sion is producing a minimum value in December of about 23.42 kilowatt hours in the month. Similarly, the Aptera is producing 22.84 and the Lightyear 20. 
183.81. The maximum production month is in July, with the Sion producing 142.44, the Aptera 114.76, and the Lightyear 167.21. So this is the first part of the story, how much energy these solar panels can produce. But the more important part comes with the efficiency. How much distance can they generate from the same power? And obviously the Aptera and the Lightyear are considerably more efficient. So how does this convert to distance? So in December, this converts to about 113.6 kilometers for the Sion, 361.6 for the Aptera, and 247.2 for the Lightyear. In the most productive month in July, the Sion could reach around 691.1 kilometers, the Aptera 1,817 kilometers, and the Lightyear 1,736.2 kilometers. What's interesting to note here is that because the Aptera has a greater proportion of its solar cells facing towards the sun, it does have an advantage in the winter months, even over the light year. In their most productive month in July, the light year is reaching 96% of the total range acquired by the Aptera, but in December, this drops to only 68% of that range, as one third of the light year's solar cells are pointed away from the sun, compared to only about 14% of the Aptera's. So we can see from the yearly range the difference between the zone 2 calculation, which is a maximum yearly output and is not realistic, and the zone 3 calculation, which I've adjusted to make it much more realistic by taking a third off the range, that the Sion doesn't quite pass my minimum benchmark of 7,500 kilometers of range generated per year. The Aptera on the Lightyear, on the other hand, do meet these criteria. That doesn't mean the Sion is bad, it just means that it's nowhere near as efficient as the Aptera and the Lightyear, and you should temper your expectations into how much range you're going to get per year from this vehicle. If you drive less than that, or you live in a much sunnier location, then obviously you're going to get more range from each of these vehicles, but just bear that in mind that this vehicle is not as efficient as it could be. Now, the main reason I chose Munich for this comparison was because Sion already chose Munich as their base for calculating their solar range. Now, if we look at what they've calculated and what I've calculated, there is a difference. And this difference is quite considerable in some months. Funnily enough, in more productive months in between May and July, I actually predicted the Sion could achieve higher results than they say. But this drops off considerably in February and March, where Sion have claimed a much higher percentage of range than what I think is possible. Sion have also claimed a maximum range, which is interesting because, as far as I'm aware, this amount of solar irradiation has never been achieved in Munich and is basically based on having perfectly sunny days every day of that month. So although it's theoretically possible, it's not very realistic and is, to be honest, quite misleading. Another fact to take into consideration here is that the difference between Sion's claim and my calculation averages out at around 10%. Now I calculated a 10% conversion loss throughout the whole system for each of these cars, and it seems that Sion have not done that, and so their claim for me is also quite unrealistic. Also unrealistic, I find, is the cloudy day calculation. In my experience living very close to Munich, on a cloudy day you can expect around 10% of each of these peak values, and here they're clearly not 10%. I appreciate they have marketing to do to try and sell vehicles, but I also think if we don't want to give solar electric vehicles a bad name, then we have to be realistic about the expectations. So obviously the Sion's performance in comparison to Lightyear and Aptera is completely different. The Sion is generating somewhere between 30 and 40% of the range that the Aptera and the Lightyear can produce in similar months, despite the fact that it has the largest kilowatt peak configuration. And this basically comes directly from the design of the Sion, which has not been optimized to take advantage of solar power. If we compare these three vehicles to the Tesla Model 3, for example, Example, we can get a better understanding of why the Sion is losing out so much to the Lightyear and the Aptera. Using the kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers based on the EPA efficiency, we can see that the Sion uses considerably more energy per 100 kilometers than the Tesla, but the Lightyear and the Aptera use significantly less. And so every kilowatt hour produced by the Aptera and Lightyear can be converted into much greater distances than the Sion. When designing a solar electric vehicle, it is quite clear that increasing the efficiency of the vehicle should be the number one priority because then you can generate much greater a range from the same kilowatt hour of power. And clearly the Sion has not done this. That being said, I think the Sion is targeted at a slightly different market and so perhaps comparing them directly is not particularly fair. I see the Sion as a runaround car. It's something to take the kids to school in and for that it would fulfill its role very well. If you're not using it to commute large distances every day or travel on the motorway, then the Sion could be a great option. The Lightyear one I see as more of an executive car, someone that travels great distances and wants to do so in style and also using their own solar power. The Aptera is something of a different beast altogether. For me, the Aptera is more of a statement of freedom. This car is not really intended as a family car, but more of a car for couples and adventurers who want to get out into the wide open and be completely independent. All cars have their pluses and minuses, and they're all great in their own separate ways. The Sion is probably great as a runaround car. The Lightyear 
is in my opinion by far the best solar family or executive car and the Aptera is by far the best for those people who want to live life without limits. If you're interested in purchasing Aptera then please use the link below. You will save $30 on the reservation fee which is completely refundable. As a final note if you're looking for a VPN service please check out NordVPN. I've been using them for years and they're great and if you're quick you can save significantly on their yearly subscriptions using the link below. Thanks for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.